like most of my colleagues, I try to remain current with the actual state of the church and its possible future by reading books and articles. And for some reasons, it seems these days I only come across text like uh, the five mistakes congregation keep repeating, seven lessons to ministerial success, or ten characteristics of thriving churches. These articles are well written by knowledgeable people. However, I personally struggle with those reflections because they tend to reduce uh, religion, faith, spirituality to a simple list of visible action, decisions, and characteristics. <coughs> Sorry. We know that life in itself is complicated and there's many aspects of our existence that are not tangible or cannot be experienced with our human senses. Um, take, for example, love. We cannot touch or hear love, but it surely exists, and we can witness its manifestation in our world. In the same way, God cannot be seen or, or tasted, but we believe the Holy One is present in our midst and works through and beyond our structures, uh, process, and human intellect. Despite the attempt of a few religious leaders of our world, God cannot be boxed, controlled, or restricted to only one way, especially one way to be the church. Well, in the Gospel according to John, we meet one of those men. Nicodemus was uh, an important person of his society. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, uh, which can be described in today's terms as a mix of our Canadian Supreme Court and a legislative body overseeing Jewish, uh, Jewish and religious affair. Without a doubt, Nicodemus was considered a power elite among his people, a leader. Uh, an educated man who was chosen to identify acceptable and, and acceptable religious structures and norms. In short, he was Mr. Big Shot, and he was surely used to be listened to and obeyed. So one night, Nicodemus goes to meet this young rabbi from Nazareth named Jesus. And Nicodemus' goal was not necessarily to uh, debate him or to evaluate the accuracy of his faith. On the contrary, he seemed to have developed some sort of respect for Jesus by saying right from the beginning, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do uh, these signs that you do, the miracles, apart from the presence of God. For people like Nicodemus, the equation is quite simple. If you can do miracles, you're sent by God. No miracle, not sent by God. How hard it is to understand, he might have said. Well, Jesus replies that, yes, miracles are nice, but one has to learn to go beyond them. Human beings cannot truly experience the realm of God with their human senses. We cannot see, hear, or touch God's kingdom. One has to become able to engage our world completely differently, as, most, as almost as he or she was a new person as if one was a born from above, was born anew. And I can only imagine our poor Nicodemus listening 
Jesus with a very perplex face before finally saying, what are you talking about? Born again, like the full adult me, going inside my mother and then, no, are you serious? It does not make sense. Yeah, does not make sense. Obviously, Nicodemus failed to understand what Jesus was saying, as most of us do when we face similar difficult questions. You see, we live in a scientific and technological world, which tells us that everything has an explanation. Everything eventually can be understood. We do have the scientific terms and information to explain what was considered previously something like America's healing. However, on occasions, when we're confronted with the darkest side of humanity, unexplicable succession of events, or senseless tragedies, we often wonder how can these things be? Why did she develop a cancer and not me? What, why did he walk into that specific store at that specific time? Why did they give to this group exactly what they needed to achieve their goal? Most often, even if we analyze our situation with our mind, use the best technology at our disposal, or dig um, our Bible for some sort of divine explanation, we simply don't know. We cannot put the finger on it. It does not make sense. We ask, how can these things be? Nicodemus struggled to understand Jesus' message because he led himself to be stuck in one level of thinking and could not see beyond it. For him and for countless of others today, faith and spirituality is essentially a question of knowledge, doctrines, and dogmas. Religion is the visible and quantifiable results of learned behaviors, beliefs, and practice. How wealthy is your congregation? Well, just count the number of people showing up on Sunday morning, or, or the amount of money in a bank account. How, how hard it is to understand, we might add. However, today's texts remind us that Yes, statistics, money, and accomplishment are important, but we also need to look at faith and spirituality from a different lens, a different angle. Religion is also a question of relationship and spiritual growth. Revelation and inspiration can lead to a new vision, a new understanding of our lives. The world that Jesus came to announce can also be experienced through a beautiful musical prelude or a few minutes of meditation at home. Believing in the existence of God ought to be more than acknowledging miraculous signs, visible proof, extraordinary events, supernatural accomplishment or fantastic phenomena. Our faith, our spirituality also have to be anchored in some sort of trust, in a faithful relationship with God that often goes above words. Often it's, it's anch, an intuition a gut feeling that lead us to do things that do not make sense otherwise. Faith is to believe that something can be without receiving any proof in exchange. It is accepting to live in the 
I don't know, or I'm not sure, and yet still moving forward. It is accepting that each time we struggle with a very difficult question, we might not find one single answer, but even more difficult questions. It is accepting there's such a thing as a mystery that is beyond our understanding and wisdom. And for most of us, it's really difficult to accept this because it forces us to exist in a state of tension between the destination and the journey. It's like going on a walk on a beautiful uh, afternoon. There's a part of us that want to reach our destination or, or to look on a Fitbit to see if we're close to achieve our 10,000 step goal for a day. And there's another part of us that just want to stop once in a while to look around, take a picture, to talk to someone we just meet. Even if we tend to focus a little more on point of arrival than how we get there, both elements are important and essential for our well-being. And in the same way, God's kingdom becomes a reality when we both practice and live a religion. Jesus' words make sense when we learn them and also go beyond them in our daily lives. We can become a better person, a new person, a renewed person, when we're ready to accept, to look at life with both knowledge and our experiences. When Nicodemus went to meet Jesus, was he expecting to encounter essentially an interesting teacher who performs impressive stunts? Was Nicodemus profoundly transformed by its encounter with Jesus? Did Nicodemus actually exist and approach Jesus? The truth is, I don't know. And it does not matter to me. Beyond the words of this story, I believe there's a God always looking for ways to reveal self to those who accept the challenge to engage the world from a different angle. And for this, thanks be to God and Amen.